it didn't really occur to me to shoot an abortionist myself until it was eight days prior to the shooting. I was touching up a car on a, on a used car lot, and it hit me that uh, what would happen if I were to shoot an abortionist myself. It was a difficult morning. I had stayed up late the previous night preparing virtually my every move so I could just force myself to go through them. I thought I was going to be full of righteous zeal to carry out the, the shooting, but I wasn't. My, my, my stomach felt like a bottomless pit, you know, and, and I, uh, uh, the, norm, the normal zest and zeal I have in life was just missing. It, it, was, it was very difficult. Um, I'm smiling now about it, but I wasn't smiling then. It was a very grim task. They pulled in past me and uh, parked, and I took about 10 steps to where I had laid my shotgun and pulled it out, and um, there was a wooden fence that at that point it scared me from their view, and so I took a quick peek around the, the side of the fence to see where they were, and I, so then I stepped out from behind the, the fence and raised the shotgun and, and, re and fired three times. So, um, the first three shots were almost directly at, they were directly at the driver, and I think he absorbed most of the shot. And then I ran to a tree, and I knelt behind the tree as I had planned and reloaded three rounds in my shotgun, and then raised the gun again. And at that time, the abortionist was rocking his head back and forth. I think he was trying to avoid having his head shot. And as a matter of fact, he succeeded, because my first shot missed, and I lowered my aim, the second shot hit his body, his body reacted very violently. And then I followed that with uh, three more subsequent shots, and he stopped moving. And also no question that I hope others will act in ways similar to the way I acted. So yeah, I hope to uh, encourage others to, to defend the unborn much as I did. Defendant Paul Jennings Hill is hereby sentenced in count one the death of the murder of Dr. John Baynard Foote is hereby sentenced in count. To when the prosecution the first announced they were going to be seeking the death penalty, the, the heightened threat definitely served to increase my joy. <laughs> it really did. Uh, and and uh, because the prospect of possibly dying for having obeyed Jesus Christ and defended innocent children um, is, was a wonderful prospect. It continue, continues to be. Actually, I didn't really decide to do it until Monday, prior to my shooting abortions on Friday. And uh, it was a very emotional experience because I was thinking in my mind whether I was going to shoot this abortionist or not. And yet, I kind of felt like I probably would. And um, we went to Pensacola Beach and got a relatively secluded section of the beach there. And I had three children, a three-year-old, a six-year-old, and a nine-year-old. And um, there was one a uh, portion of our time there at the beach where it was very uh, emotional for me because I realized I would never be going to the beach like this again with my children. And it was, uh, you, um, literally all my paternal instincts were stirred there as I was playing with my children and, and watching them and watching my wife, you know, and walk along the beach. And uh, I took each one of the children one by one out into the surf, you know, over their heads. And I was supporting each one and holding them in, in the water and um, it occurred to me that I was making a sacrifice you know it was um, thinking about the promise made to Abraham that if he was willing to sacrifice his son that God would grant him descendants as numerous as the sands of the of, on the seashore and the stars in the sky and um, you know I just laid hold on that promise you know and and um, um, you know there, there was a, a real um, the emotions were so powerful, you know, it was difficult to keep tears from coming to my eyes. And I just, uh, you know, just lifted my heart up and pray 